is that it's been a great place to work, great place to live, great place to raise our kids. What brought me to Nevada was skiing. And what brought me to DRI was the opportunity to work on a project there at, as a graduate student. I came to DRI in the early 90s. However, my first interactions with DRI uh, go back to the 1970s. I operate a laboratory, um, the only one like it in the world, and we uh, focus on ice core analysis, and we analyze ice cores in a way that no one else does. It's no exaggeration but it's to say that sort of once a week we discover something that maybe has never been seen before. It's really exciting stuff. The whole ice core goes back about 62,000 years. The part that we're analyzing right now is about 18,500 years old. So we're in the transition from the last glacial period to the interglacial. Doing the archaeology of nuclear testing remains was really a very new thing. It was one of the first projects actually in the world that was really looking at contemporary archaeology, which over the past 20 years has become standard within the field. And it's our work on the nuclear testing remains that has brought actually worldwide recognition to DRI and to the researchers that work on the program. In the last three, four years, Lake Mead has been plagued by an invasive species called quagga mussel. They've been uh, spreading and causing damage to a lot of underwater structures. What I'm trying to do is I'm not only trying to understand the science of quagga mussels, physiology of quagga mussels, how they grow, how they increase, how they invade, but also trying to find ways to kill them. DRI has provided me a good platform, it has given me excellent labs, facilities, support uh, uh, administration. The project um, is based in West Africa and it has to do with providing water to rural populations there. What we've done recently is to help them set up their own lab in West Africa. It's very important that they are developing in-country capacity to do these analyses themselves rather than sending them the samples halfway across the world to DRI. I'll spend a lot of time looking at groundwater levels in West Africa or fluctuations on the Carson River or precipitation that's fallen in eastern Nevada. I look at air quality atmospheric chemistry. I'll look at everything from urban air quality in megacities, such as, such as Cairo, uh, to atmospheric deposition in Lake Tahoe. It's such a pleasure to work in an area that beautiful. It's an environmental treasure. So how do we make sure that future generations you know, can access that? My success or failure at, at DRI really depends on my ability to generate funds. Generating funds also then means that my ability to deliver quality product to those who provide me with funding. You have a lot of control over the types of research that you do, and at the same time, you have a lot of freedom in how you design and do the research. It's an exciting uh, way to go about developing your scientific interests. An awful lot of the work that I do is related to human impacts and so we need to understand how climate varied in the past before humans became, uh, there were enough of us or our activities were enough to uh, alter climate or alter atmospheric chemistry. The researchers are really committed to learning more information about the world that we live in and hopefully that information can be used to make all our lives better. Because of the research that we do here, world-class quality research that we're doing here, that we're bringing a lot of attention to Reno. DRI is doing a cutting-edge science to make environment better. Cutting-edge science to provide uh, you know, new solutions, new tools to make uh, you know, people's uh, lives better. DRI is doing a good thing, and DRI is a good institution uh, for the state of Nevada and the world.